What is happening guys and welcome back to the channel. First things first, make sure you smash a like on the video and if you're new, subscribe to the channel. And it finished England nil, Scotland nil in the rain at Wembley last night. And quite frankly, from an England perspective, it was absolutely pathetic. Um, really poor, created absolutely nothing other than the John Stones free header where, look, it's not, it's not an absolute sitter, but a player of his quality should be scoring that. We didn't have a single other chance in the whole game. And with the creative players that we have at our disposal, that quite frankly is criminal not to be able to create anything against a side that is the third lowest ranked team in the tournament, not qualified for a tournament since World Cup France 98. It was embarrassing from an England perspective. But before I go any deeper on England, I just want to say actually to Scotland, give them some credit where it's due. They were they were fantastic on the night. Um, I thought young Billy Gilmore in midfield was rightly named man of the match. John McGinn was outstanding alongside him. Andy Robertson was up and down that left-hand side all game. And they dominated that midfield battle. We looked overrun in there and they created a lot more chances. And if they had slightly better forwards up top, then they would have, they would have beaten us in the game maybe one or two nil. And the fact we had to scramble to clear chances off the line to hang on for a point against Scotland just shows actually in reality how far this England side is off the pace. Um, going at it from an England perspective, I can't have any complaints with the lineup to be honest. Again, I think Jack Grealish should start, but obviously Southgate absolutely loves Sterling. He could do absolutely no wrong in his opinion. So it was kind of obvious he was going to start given he scored the goal against Croatia as well. Um, I think it was the right decision not to bring Harry Maguire back in, um, considering it was a clean sheet, just keep that continuity at the back. And then you think if you win this game, you're qualified, then give Maguire some minutes and a dead rubber against the Czech Republic on, on Tuesday night. So no complaints there. Um, I'm slightly surprised that there were no changes further up the pitch. I thought we would have definitely seen the likes of Jack Grealish from the start. Um, and, you know, I would have preferred to have not seen two holding midfielders against Scotland at Wembley. It's probably Scotland. Why are we playing two holding midfielders? I would have liked to have seen perhaps maybe Jude Bellingham alongside Declan Rice or just having the one holder in Declan Rice and then maybe playing like two eights with Mason Mount and Jack Grealish ahead of him would have offered a lot more on the pitch. So it's disappointing not to, not to see that happen. But yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know what to say. I just think it, it's just that this match here it exposed Southgate, in my opinion, for his for his shortcomings. The guy fell into the job. He's a yes man for the FA. His CV is utterly useless. All he's got on it is is Middlesbrough. And if he became available tomorrow, no top team would be going for him whatsoever. And I think that speaks volumes for him. Um, I'm sick of fan fanboys blowing smoke up his ass. The media blowing smoke up his ass. Like these two games, I know he won against Croatia, but two shocking performances, really poor. We are a million miles from winning any international tournament. And in my opinion, it's absolutely criminal that how much talent we've got on the pitch that we've got someone like him in charge of it. And he's ruining it. He's ruining it, in my opinion. He really is. Um, his conservative football was exposed in this game. Like, all he was doing, making like for like changes. You know, go and win the game. This is Scotland. Go and win the game, you know. Grealish should have been on at half time. One of those holding midfielders should have been off. Um, it's just not good enough. Not good enough. And you then obviously have the situation with Harry Kane as well. And I'm going into this tournament, you know, myself included, a lot of England fans saying that if anything happens to Kane, then we're fucked. And yes, we are because we haven't got anyone else. Calvert Lewin is, is not great, let's be honest. And Marcus Rashford is not a centre forward and his finishing is awful so you look at it and you think right okay if we keep Kane fit and he's on form then we should be okay big problem going into this tournament is Kane has not come into the tournament on good form at all back end of last season not great obviously I know he won the, the golden boot and the uh, most assists award in the league last season but this this start of the Euros he's just looks so flat he looks really leggy it looks like there's a lot weighing on his mind obviously potential for a big move maybe all the um unrest at Tottenham might be unsettling him but he's been so poor he hasn't had a single shot on target in in both in both games and and rightly subbed off last night 
there's also no service for him. Like, he's dropping deep. Um, he doesn't need to do that for England. At Spurs, you can understand why he drops deep, because realistically, only Son is kind of good enough at Spurs to, to help him out. But at England, we've got the likes of, you know, Sterling, Sancho, Rashford, um, Mount, Grealish, all those guys that he doesn't need to drop deep. But his performances are a real concern. And how do we go about getting the best out of him? Because in this game last night, 19, 19 touches of the football in his, in his whole in his whole 70-odd minutes, however long he played before he was rightly removed. And that is a concern going forward. I don't know how Gareth's going to get the most out of him because anyone else in that position is it's not really happening. But again, back to Southgate, we've got five subs. Why are we making two substitutions, both like for like? How Calvin Phillips and how Sterling played the whole 90 minutes is absolutely beyond me. I've got no idea what Sterling has to do to be subbed in an England shirt. It, it was really... I mean, it was mind blowing to be honest. I just, I just don't get it at all. I really don't get it. You know, Phil Foden in, in great form for Manchester City coming into the tournament. He's playing out of position. What is it with England? Play players in their position where they want to play. Don't start just fitting them in because you, for, for any old reason. It's just, it's just not working. Um, I don't know if Southgate is doesn't watch the Bundesliga. But what does Jaden Sancho have to do to get anywhere near the pitch in an England shirt? I, 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 I can't quite fathom that one either. Um, but look, we go into the, the, the Czech Republic on Tuesday night. It's kind of a winner-takes-all clash there, top by, I think, one goal or goal difference. If we win that, we finish top of the group um, and we, we move on to, the, on to the last 16. But again, just so disappointing, so flat, um, and really just a nothing performance again. And you just don't know where, where like a decent England performance is coming from. And I'm sorry, but the manager's got to go. He's well out of his depth. And people say, oh yeah, he's great for England. What, what has he done for England? Got us to a World Cup semi-final where the only good teams we played, we lost. We got, had to go through against Colombia on penalties. You know, we just got past an average Sweden side. And then we lose to Belgium both times and we lose to Croatia. It's honestly, I'm sick of it. And he needs to move on. Look, let's be honest, if we top the group, we're going out in the last 16 anyway. Um, so, and I think that will expose Southgate. It, he's really not up to it, in my opinion. And this young, talented group of players need to play actual proper football. And Southgate just plays conservative, negative football. And nothing's going to change my mind on that. And he, he needs to go, as I've said. But yeah, a disappointing night at Wembley and we move on to Tuesday night where hopefully we can get the result against the Czechs and uh, move on to the last 16 where we're going to face a tough tie providing we come top. Um, it'll be France, Germany or Portugal uh, we, we'll be facing or we do end up coming second. We'll be facing the winners of the Spain and Sweden group. Again, not an easy tie, but I think it will just be delaying the inevitable if we somehow fluke our way to like the quarterfinals. But I think the media need to actually you know, open their eyes and see England for what they are and it, we're just not good enough we're an average side at best I'm sorry but yeah it finished England nil Scotland nil I can't believe I'm saying that um and we roll on to Tuesday night but as I said at the start guys smash a like on the video make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'll catch you in the next video